welcome to Remote STEM Class. It's Mr. Dowd here. So, um, I just want to give you the heads up that this avatar project, the Tinkercad avatar project we've been continuously working on for a while now, is due tonight at 11.59. All right. Um, I might extend it out, but I really want it done so we can switch over to something else because it's uh, we've been working on this for a couple weeks now. So, um, all I'm going to do today is reiterate what I said yesterday on the keypad tips. So I think that's very useful to know. So if you remember back yesterday, because it was so long ago, we had these tips here. So all I did was type in keyboard shortcuts for Tinkercad. And if you scroll down to viewing designs, what were the two I really wanted to like make sure you guys knew? That's why it was a poll question yesterday, because it's very important, okay? It's the orbit view and the pan view. All right, so if I go back to my design here, if I want to see, I just click my right trigger to move around like that to orbit your view, right? You can also do it with this. However, if you're not using a mouse, you'll have to hold down or review the control button. And remember the left mouse button is the same thing as the keypad, right? So hold down the shift and click. Hold down shift. Not shift, it is control. My bad. Control and click and it rotates it. This will make it very easy for you guys to really get the view you want instead of trying to click around on that uh, cube on the top left hand corner. And then same thing with the pan view, which is the shift and right mouse button. So it's also the circle on your mouse too, the roller. If you hold and click that, it will pan on that angle for you. Makes it very easy. All right. But if you don't have a mouse, you have to do control and shift and the left button, which is what? The keypad, right? So control, shift, and the keypad pans on the angle you're already looking at. So say if I wanted to see the front face of my character, I could orbit view over, and then, oh, well, this is a little bit high for me. I could always control shift and then pan up a little bit, zoom in, and then pan down, so I can get a perfect view of what I want to look at. Okay, guys? That's all I had for today. So I uh, finished up these projects and Thursday we'll be starting a new thing. Okay guys, see you then. Bye. Hi guys. Today I'm gonna make a vegetable soup which is perfect for this time of year. So I'm gonna start by grabbing some carrots. And now it's peeling them like this, okay. And then I'm going to cut them. So they look like this. Okay. All you need is two carrots, but I guess the more soup you make, you can put as much carrots as you want. You really like them. Okay, then I'm gonna take I cut this onion in half so I'm gonna so it looks like this and I'm going to cut it into little pieces like dicing it okay how many of you cry when you cut an onion I sometimes do this is not making Okay, so this is going to have also kale, which is a green superfood. It's kind of like lettuce and spinach. I don't know if you've had kale, but it's very good for you. You can have just plain kale, you don't have to cook it. You can have it in salad. 
So when I was peeling my carrots, I peeled them like this and everything got washed. Right? My eyes are burning, they're tearing up now. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to do, take all this and I'm gonna put it into a pan and I'm going to cook it over medium heat until the vegetables are light brown and a little soft, which will be about four minutes. So I will show you what that looks like once I add it to the pan. So this is what I'm adding so far. Okay, so the onions and the carrots have been cooking for about four minutes. I put a little garlic in. And I'm putting in some crushed tomatoes, which you can get in the store. Under crush, if they're like in a can or in a box, usually in a can. Okay. And I'm also going to add three cups of water. That's two cups. I need one more. Okay, now it's boiling. So once I get it boiling, I'm gonna turn it down. Oops, turn it really low. There we go. And I'm going to add the kale. And the couscous. Okay. I'm gonna mix it up. And I'm gonna let it cook for about another five minutes. Until the kale, which is the green stuff, is wilted or shrinks down. Just like that time I cooked spinach and it shrunk down, this will shrink down a little bit. Looks yummy. Okay, so that'll cook for about another five to 10 minutes. And I will show you the product at the end when it's done. Okay, so it's all done. Oh, good that looks. So I'm just gonna scoop it out, put some in a bowl. Now, the thing with vegetable soup is you can pretty much add what you want to it for veggies. cheese on it. Right. And then I have this piece of bread, it's like a little baguette, and voila, you have a nice lunch or dinner, light dinner. So yeah, that's it. Looks good. And I have plenty left over. So you can freeze it or you can save it for later in the week. Okay, till next time. Hey Gators, welcome back. Today we're going to go over the five steps to an effective PSA. Okay, we've been talking about these PSAs, these public service announcements, and we're going to continue with them. Okay, so here are the five steps. Be authentic. Okay, whatever you're trying to warn people about has to be something that's important to you. Okay, so really feel what you're saying. Keep your message simple. That's something we've been talking about. Having that tagline, that catchphrase, something that's going to catch the audience's attention. Okay, also be careful how you format your delivery. 
When you're using Flipgrid, really be conscious of the types of filters and the types of stickers and the types of banners that you're going to put on to make sure that it adds to your message and doesn't take away from it. You don't want the audience to be distracted, okay? Follow up and track. That means you're actually gonna go back to your PSA after you record it and see what other people think of it. Did anybody leave you a comment? Did anybody leave you feedback? How do they feel about your message? And finally, measure success. Well, we're gonna be able to measure our success through this by literally looking around our city. Are people doing the right thing? Are they hearing your message? Because again, we are gonna put some of these up on Lawrence Public Television. That way people can see that you care. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna move down just a little bit and I wanna show you what my sample script is, all right? So again, we wanna keep our script simple, all right? And stick to the script. So mine's gonna sound something like this. <clears throat> I wanna be back in school. Our children want to be back in school. Together we can make this happen. Remember the three W's, and you notice in parentheses it says visual of these on screen. So I'm gonna write those three words, those three catchphrases on the screen. Remember the three W's, especially with the holidays coming up. One less gathering this year may mean one less empty chair next year. So Lawrence, wash your hands, wear your mask, watch your distance, and together we can make our city safe. This advertisement is brought to you by the Arlington Middle School. Okay? All right. It's that simple. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. I'm looking forward to seeing your PSAs. They are due on Friday. All right, continue working on them. And remember, show it in your face. Show it with your expression. I know it's hard on the camera, but do your best. All right, can't wait to see them, Gators. Go get them. Hi guys. We're going to continue on with drawing trees today. We started working on a landscape. I'm working in the realistic style. We looked at three different styles, realistic, abstract, and cartoon. So you can choose a style that you want to work in. I'm working in a realistic style and I started making a small tree in the background. If you want something to appear to be far away in the background, in the distance, you want to make it smaller and you want to make it close to that horizon line. In my middle ground, I have a medium sized tree. So I don't want that one to be too big and I don't want it to be too small. It's kind of a medium size and it's in the middle ground. My largest tree is in the foreground. So this tree appears to be closest to the viewer this tree appears to be a little bit further into the picture and this one is the farthest away. So you want to keep that in mind. Any objects you want to appear to be in the background far away are going to be small and close to that horizon line. Middle ground, you're going to make things about medium size in this area and anything in the foreground is the closest object or closest objects to the viewer, to you looking at it. And this tree so far is my closest object in the foreground. So I made it really big and you can see a lot of detail in it. Farther away, you might see less detail. Close up, you're gonna show a lot of detail. So I showed two different ways of adding leaves as well. You can just kind of do a little, kind of a squiggly line around the top of the tree, or you can do all these little fun individual leaf shapes. It's up to you. I'm just gonna finish this side by doing a little bit of that fun line again. Just kind of suggests that there's some leaves there. And it's a quicker way of adding a detail like this leaves in our tree but of course you can spend a little time doing all these little individual leaves if you want to okay so another thing i'm going to add to my landscape drawing is i think i want to make a little path or maybe like a little river or a road i'm going to go with a river for this one and i'm going to start at my horizon line maybe my river starts really far away and it's going to be kind of a curvy, twisty river. I'm just going to start with my first line for it. I'm going to bring it out this way over here. 
Now, what I want to do is I want to create the illusion of my river being far away. So it's starting really far away. So as I mentioned before, anything that you want to appear far away in the background in the distance is going to be a little smaller. So we want our river to appear to be smaller when it starts back here. And as it comes gradually into the middle ground and the foreground close up, we're going to make the river appear to be wider. It's just a little trick. So I'm starting here. And as I bring my pencil down to the bottom of the page, I'm starting to make this line, um, this space become a little bit wider. Here I go. There. So that instantly creates the illusion of this river being really close here, and it's gradually going back into space. Okay. I might even make this even smaller. I'm going to make that just kind of connect there. There. Now, in the way distance, I think I want to do like some little hills or some mountains. So I might start off just making some kind of smaller little hills. Right now, these little hills are um, the most farthest away detail in my landscape. I made it right directly on the horizon line and I'm making those little hills smaller. But I think I'm going to make some larger mountains behind them. Now, I want them to look like bigger mountains, but I don't want to make them so big that they're as big as this tree. This is in my foreground. I want to make large mountains, but I still want them to appear to be far away. So making them a, a little bit above my horizon line, making them kind of big. Now these mountains would be taller than this tree. So if you were walking, and you were walking along the river, and you kept walking down to where these mountains are, this mountain would be extremely high. But if you came back here, if this was a real landscape, and you were standing next to this tree, maybe the tree would be maybe that much taller than you, if this was your head, and you were standing right here, maybe. But if you were standing by this mountain, you would be teeny, teeny little person, like that. So I'm going to keep on going with this big, tall mountain, and it kind of disappears behind that tree. So that's what I'm going to add today. You can always add a little bit of a sun or a moon back there, and you can keep on adding details. You can make more and more and more trees. I may, may add a couple of more trees back here. And you don't have to do a lot of detail for these trees because they're so far away that you just can kind of do like... A quick little tree. Make them small. We talked about starting with a letter Y. You can do that letter Y first and then add some other letter Y's to make more branches. So now I have a bunch of trees back there. You can add more trees, you can add more details, you can add some people. I started to do a little person here just to talk about size relationships. So it's up to you what you add to your landscape. And remember, if you're working in a different style, maybe you chose to do an abstract looking landscape. Well, I made an abstract one. Take a look at this and you can see some unusual trees there. I made a very strange looking background. Are those mountains trees? I don't know. When you work in an abstract style, you can have a lot of fun with just playing around with some interesting shapes and designs. Look at the sun. It's a clock. It's up to you what style you do. Good luck. Bye. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Virtual PE. I'm Miss Sridi. All right, so today with me, um, we're gonna do a core workout and you don't need any weights or anything. So we're gonna work on our abdominal muscles um, and we're gonna do, I think we got like seven exercises. Uh, each one's going to be done for 45 seconds each, and then you'll work out with Mr. Yameen, all right? So I'll go over how to do the exercises first, and then we'll get right into the workout. Okay, guys, today's a cardio day, okay? So we're going to do um, a couple movements we've already done, and I'm going to add in a new movement that we haven't done yet. I'll show them to you, give you a minute, and we'll get going on it, okay? So obviously we start off right in place, okay? After that, we're going to do a hop step, okay? So what we'll do is we'll go lateral hop step, one side to the other, we just... Hopping 
on our foot and we are balancing, okay? Then we'll run in place, then we'll do some jump ropes, run in place, and we'll end off with some jumping jacks, okay? Take a minute, get ready to go. All right, so for our first workout, we're just gonna do regular crunches, okay? When we do them, just make sure you hold your ears or touch your ears and you just come up, you bring your elbows up. Um, you don't have to do a full all the way up because it's not a sit up. All right, so you're just crunching it so you can feel the crunch in the abs. Making sure you're getting your shoulder blades off the floor. Then the next exercise will be swimmers. You've kind of done these ones before, Mr. your means. So it's going to be opposite hand, opposite foot goes in the air. Okay? And it's opposite hand, opposite foot, opposite hand, opposite foot. Now you can go as slow as you like, or you can speed it up and go a little bit faster. Okay? After that, we're going to do a side crunch. So you're going to be on your side. And the goal is to sit here and bring your elbow kind of to your knee. Okay? So you're going to crunch. Again, I believe you've done this with Mr. Me. Alright? We're going to do one side for 45 seconds and then we'll do the other side for 45 seconds. Um, our fourth activity will be what we call the jackknife crunch. We've done half of this once before with me. This time I'm going to do the full thing. Okay? So your hands are going to be up here. You're going to bring them up and then you're going to come up. Okay? And then back down. So you bring them both up at the same time and then you bring them up and then you bring them back down. Uh, the fifth activity is called uh, the chest rise. Your forearms are going to be flat on the floor. Okay? And you're just basically raising your upper chest off the floor. The next one is going to be our Russian, our Russian twist. We've done this before, typically we do it with weights. This time we're not going to do it with weights. You're going back as far as you can, you're going to make a triangle with your hands. And we're just going to control and twist. The reason why I'm saying do a triangle is to make sure we're not like throwing our hands um, left to right. right. So you want to do a controlled twist. You want to make sure you lean back far enough where you can feel it in your abs, but not too far where you're like um, using your back to hold yourself up. Right, and then the last one will be the X crunch. Again, it'll be opposite hand, opposite leg, opposite hand, opposite leg. All right, so that's gonna be our workout with me. Um, I don't know, let's get going. Crunches.
12. side crunches. The other side, side punches. Jack Knight Crutch. Just raises.
Russian twist. Extra crunch. So for our first workout, we're just going to do regular crunches, okay? When we do them, just make sure you hold your ears or touch your ears and you just come up and bring your elbows up. Um, you don't have to do a full all the way up because it's not a sit up, all right? So you're just crunching it so you can feel the crunch in the abs, making sure you're, you get your shoulder blades off the floor. Then the next exercise will be swimmers. We've kind of done these ones before with Mr. Yamin, so it's going to be opposite hand, opposite foot, but in the air, okay? And it's opposite hand, opposite foot, opposite hand, opposite foot. Now you can go as slow as you like, or you can speed it up and go a little bit faster. Okay? After that, we're going to do a side crunch. So you're going to be on your side. And the goal is to sit here and bring your elbow kind of to your knee. Okay? So you're going to crunch. Again, I believe we've done this with Miss Yumi. All right? We're going to do one side for 45 seconds, and then we'll do the other side for 45 seconds. Um, our fourth activity will be what we call the jackknife crunch. We've done half of this once before with me. This time we're going to do the full thing. Okay? So your hands are going to be up here. You're going to bring them up and then you're going to come up. Okay? And then back down. So you bring them both up at the same time and then you bring them up and then you bring them back down. Uh, the fifth activity is called uh, the chest rise. Your forearms are going to be flat on the floor, okay? And you're basically raising the upper chest off the floor. The next one is going to be our Russian, our Russian twist. We've done this before. Typically, we do it with weight. This time, we're not going to do it with weight. You're going to lean back as far as you can. You're going to make a triangle with your hands. And we're just going to control and twist. The reason why I'm saying do a triangle is to make sure we're not like throwing our hands um, left to right. Right, so you want to do a controlled twist. You want to make sure you're leaning back far enough where you can feel it in your abs, but not too far where you're like um, using your back to hold yourself up. All right, and then the last one will be the X crunch. Again, it'll be opposite hand, opposite leg, opposite hand, opposite leg. All right, so that's gonna be our workout with me. Um, Let's get going.
side crunches. The other side, side punches.
Jackknife Crutch. Just raises. Russian twist. Thanks for watching Enrichment TV, Gators. Remember, work hard, be nice, and we'll see you tomorrow.